So, um, I'm going to be discussing the unpredictability of Generation Y and how, even though we don't really know what's going to happen, how it may prove to be a positive thing. So, everything's moving, like, really quickly. There's Facebook, there's blogs, there's that annoying whale that pops up on Twitter every two seconds because too many people are tweeting and it's over capacity. Um, the way that we think about, you know, like, the 90s or the 80s or other decades, a bunch of clothing items come to our mind. When you think about this past de decade, nothing really does, and it'll be the same with this upcoming one because, you know, trends are moving so quickly. Since technology moves so fast, we always want something more, and I think that my generation especially, since our resources are so vast, we always want more, and we, you know, we're over trends in two seconds. So um, this means that trends can't be dictated by a designer the way that Dior did in the 50s or the minimalists of the 90s. It's moving too quickly because there are also all these added seasons, cruise and pre-fall and resort and everything. This means there's a new democracy, though, and I think that this unpredictability of trends means that brands can just focus on their own aesthetic and world, which brings me to... Um, so a brand's world. These are four brands that I think have done a really good job of this because, well, Alexander McQueen on the website, you can see, um, you can watch shows from like 2002 and you just learn so much about the heritage of the brand. Burberry just did their Art of the Trench project which, in which they had street style photos of different people wearing their trenches in all these different ways and it just, you know, gives it this status of like something you just own. It's just your Burberry trench, you just have it. Um, Comme de Garcon, they have a, what they call a trading museum in Tokyo um, where, you know, they have archive pieces, they have hats by Stephen Jones, they have uh, sculptures by all these different artists, and it makes you feel like you're buying into this world that's like art, and it makes you feel like the clothes you're buying are works of art. And um, Prada just came out with a book um, that had, you know, stills from films they've made. Uh, background information on their architects of their stores. They even have photos of the way that the bags are made. There's nothing to hide. Um, and again, since my generation, since our resource is so vast, we, you know, we want to know what goes into making our products. Um, so what makes up this world, I think, like, you know, high quality images and videos on the McQueen website, you can watch the shows, you can zoom in on the runway photos and see the details. And the brand doesn't put a lot of money into advertising at all. A lot of money goes into an incredible show that everyone tweets about and Lady Gaga premieres her song at and everyone's excited about. Um, expanding into other fields with collaborators, you know, Lady Gaga's song, um, the Come to Garcon Trading Museum with all those different artists. You may think that teens don't really care about like, you know, you know, these different artists, but I think that there's a kind of teenage tendency to, you know, want to know about something other people don't know about and want to be cultured and a kind of, you know, like indie bands and that kind of thing we're really into. Um, blogs, because, you know, sometimes it's nice to hear about, um, to hear a critic's review, but sometimes it's nice to hear someone who, like, sounds like your friends at school who's talking about what they thought was really cool in a collection. Twitter and Facebook, um, and a kind of signature item. For Comme de Garcon, um, uh, and a luxury bag didn't work for them, so they have a perfume, and it's like the anti-perfume. So um, how this ties in to teens today, first of all, we're clicky. We have clicky tendencies, like from that still from Mean Girls with the map of the cafeteria clicks. Um, we just, you know, we like having a place where we feel like we belong. The same way we follow a band, have a signature scent that our friends know us by, have, um, you know, get a magazine every month and feel like we're devoted to. You know, there's that for brands, too. Um, for me, it's come to Garcon. I feel the most myself in their clothes. And, of course, technology, because we're growing up on Facebook and Twitter and everything. And um, with Twitter, it's like if a brand keeps popping up in your feed, you feel like you belong to it. I follow Bergdorf's on Twitter. I've never shopped there, but they tweet a lot. And now I feel like the next time I want to buy something, I'm going there first or like I have an obligation to. Um, and so, face, and then with Facebook, again, I think um, the pamphlet says that 96% of teens are in a social network. So um, one researcher found also that 
um, a Facebook fan is worth $3.60 for a brand. Don't ask me about the math equation. I could not figure it out. But, um, you know, there's a weird pride we take in having, like, a logo, a brand we feel like we belong to, you know, having the Gucci logo under our Facebook likes. It's all kind of teenage tendency. And again, the thing about collaborating with other artists, we want to know about culture and things because we can, because resources are so vast, because we want to know about things our friends don't know about. So um, is it more effective to, you know, try to keep up with all of these trends that don't really, that will be gone soon? Or, you know, just make the same versions of other brands, products, or, you know, is it better to use time and money to develop this world and environment that endears people, that promises more than just a garment, that, you know, makes teens feel like we have something we belong to, like a club or a clique, and is maybe more effective. One thing that teens are told a lot, but we maybe don't follow for a while, is like be yourself, like teachers and magazines and TV shows and everything. They all tell us that. But at some point, we all try to be like in with the in crowd, crowd or like in with the out crowd or really trendy or really like a nonconformist, a nirvana. So like, um, so I think that it's, I feel like it's kind of the same way with trends because, or with brands because now being trendy doesn't really work because they're over in two seconds. But then trying to sell us the whole like edgy thing, like there's this episode of Daria, okay, where she, um, <laughs> Where she, can, where she concludes, she's like, edgy is a term created by middle-aged, middle-brow um, people who try to say that they're doing something really dangerous, but they're really just, you know, um, marketing a product that came out of lots of research and meetings. So, <laughs> I mean, so not to say, <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I, f I hate like suddenly being like a motivational speaker and being like, be yourself, but like trendy doesn't work, edgy doesn't work. So I think that a brand that just has its own world and its own aesthetic is maybe the most effective. Again, it's something we feel like we're a part of. Um, when I wear Comme de Garcon, I'm like the most myself and I feel like I'm kind of a part of that, you know, I mean, not like a cult because that's creepy, but you know what I mean? <laughs> like, um, yeah, I think that's it, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, just while we have you, just a couple questions. Yeah. Where do you get inspiration? What, what blogs or what magazines, what long shot, what newspapers do you, uh, do you read? Or um, well, I mean, like we get the Times every day, so I read it in print, but then there's like Huffington Post and stuff for news, but then as far as inspiration goes, I like the magazines, ID, Pop, Dazed and Confused, Rush, various Vogues and Bazaars, and um, blogs, I read a lot. <laughs> um, there are way too many. There's one, you know, there are a lot of websites that post um, pages from editorials, like fashiongonerogue.com. Um, there are other blogs I like, like, more like personal style blogs where you feel like you're talking to a friend like mm -hmm. um, White Lightning or Geometric Sleep or Fashion Pirates and satire blogs like Karl Lagerfeld's Guide to Life. And yeah, I don't know, there are a lot. And so tell us about your outfit, but where did you get it? How did you find out about it and where did you buy it? Um, well, okay, my shoes I got at Beacon's Closet at a, at a like blogger meeting thing actually we all went there um socks are american apparel um and i think because of like some regulation i'm supposed to tell you that they sent them to me but they didn't like tell me to wear them here or anything i like them and um and then my dress is duskin it was a gift from my friend my collar is mew mew and i can't wear it to school so i wear it whenever else i can because it has naked people on it and um my shirt is Proenza Schooler, and no, I don't have anything on my head, yeah. <laughs> well, we, we, we wanted to give you a gift, and we thought a lot, uh, really a long time about this, and so immediately, as, as any opportunity I have, I immediately turned it into being about me. <laughs> and I remember when I was 15, and 
I hit this growth spurt, and in addition to being blessed with really bad skin, I was 6'2", 120 pounds. <laughs> so imagine Ichabod Crane with bad acne. And something that gave me a, 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 some form of security was fashion. I liked fashion. I lived in Los Angeles. And I'm going to give you the one piece of fashion or the one accessory that gave me more confidence at the age of 15. And someday when you're a historian, you can pull this out. I was the bomb in my flash blue varnaise. Nice. Will you look at these things? I mean, really. Anyways, these are yours. We want to thank you and your mother thank you very for coming much. out. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.